This story is about indigenous seeds, their resilience, intrinsic values, and the cultural activities attached to the selected seeds. It is a story about the experiences of smallholder farmers as the custodians of the indigenous seed system, how the different seed varieties have evolved and nourished our ancestors. These are seeds that nurture us. The history of seed goes as far back as the myth of Kintu. Because when Kintu came to settle here, he came with the seeds. He came with millet seeds. When Peter Robert Shaw of San Bernardo University in California did research here, he unearthed seeds which were buried 1,000 years ago. Those seeds were washed, crushed, and made into porridge. And the porridge was as good as new. Millet is the kind of food you would store and it will last many, many centuries and never get spoiled. That's why the Banyoro would say, long live like millet. Indigenous seeds are like the indigenous people, like the indigenous knowledge. They have been here since time immemorial. They supported this country, they supported the Ugandan, indigenous people, Ugandans, for a long time, long time before the, 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 the colonies came in. Until recently, when science came in and innovations came in, they started bringing about hybrid seeds. Seed goes beyond just food to culture and to the very foundation of agriculture. Today's seed also embodies centuries of knowledge about how to conserve, change, plant, and how seed influences culture. Seed is about culture, tradition, spirituality, cooperation, and diversity. We have had seeds associated with our cultures for a very, very long time. When people worship, when people sacrifice, make sacrifices, most sacrifices, they use seeds. The meal they share together is a meal of millet. This documentary highlights the resilience of smallholder farmers and the indigenous seed system, diversity of plants, empiric seed serving practices, and diverse farming cultures in selected regions of Uganda. Uganda is believed to have 54 tribes and several ethnic groups. Each of these people were eating in a certain way as their way of life. And interestingly, there was no malnutrition. The food system, as it mirrors the seed system, could feed the population adequately. All the diverse foods that they need to balance and stabilize their diets. Seed is a very critical element of a food system. And minus it, both for crop, animal and insects then a farming and a food system cannot be sustained. Smallholder farmers in Uganda are passionate and committed to agriculture, and they are farmers at heart, and their profession defines them. In agriculture, seed is an indispensable asset, and for generations, smallholder farmers have depended on the different kinds of seed which they serve and share to successfully produce food and feed their households and sell off surplus. So in order to get good seed, you first see the plant when it is still standing. You sort out the good seed you want. You may be planting millet, it may have different seeds. You try to select the best, which you see that it is coming up well. Then after selecting it, you tie it separately, you dry it separately, then you process it separately until you reach at the time of planting it. And even the beans, it is the same. They may be different beans in a garden, but you can select the best seed you want to plant. When you have picked those seeds, you would hang them somewhere 
in the kisasi. So you, you, you keep the seeds there. The smoke gets into them. Some people used to mix them with ash. Others mix them with the pepper. And then the seeds will be there for a long time. Sometimes you would collect these seeds and you put them in a gourd. I remember when we were children, we used to sing a song about Kafundara. Kafundara, an old man, wakes up with the, his hole and he picks his gourd and he goes to plant seeds. It's good something like Kafundara, Kaimuka, Naka, Sisi, Akiri, Mwinka, Yoko, Gwara, Gaya, Gaya, Mkama, We have a very wide variety of beans and they have many, many varied colors and they are grown all over to the Kitara heartland. Some of them were for med had medicinal values. Say for instance, we have a variety called Mutike. This bean called Mutike was actually fed to women who had delivered babies and it was very good for their nutrition. Nowadays, I don't see Mutike around. To so have a variety called Tintina Basezi, I don't fear night dancers. I'm not scared of night dancers because it will yield anyway. There are other seeds like uh, there is a certain type of millet which we call Ruahoima. That means we got it from Hoima. So that seed of millet is very good and it looks nice in the garden. And when you are harvesting it, it you harvest it when you are happy because it has very big heads. So it is easy to harvest. When we go to Sogam, that is what they call Chatanombe. It looks very nice when you plant it and it is growing. It breaks the soil. It is very strong. There is the, another type of cassava, which is the bukalasa. It is also very good. But for Miyaka, it means it stays in the soil for so many years. That's why it is called Miyaka. In our garden of Matoke, we have different species, but I do like Kanavururu because it, it has a very good mubumba. And we have Enzirabushera. It appears so nice when it is old. And we have Mbwazirume. It also grows very huge. Then we have Kawaragara, our indigenous. When you are taking it, it is so sweet. You like it. And we have this uh, mbogoya. Mbogoya also, a traditional mbogoya is so sweet. It is not as this which they call nuts. So that's why I try to plant our indigenous plants and seeds. We are what we eat. And what we eat determines or demonstrates who we are. If you find people who eat what they don't grow and grow what they don't eat, then they are captured. In Uganda, out of the 41 million people, over 36 million live in the rural areas where agriculture is their main source of income. This makes agriculture the mainstay of the Ugandan economy. In the present day of Uganda and the agriculture sector in particular, our food system and agriculture sector was attacked and captured so many years ago and by the elites. When did the malnutrition come to Uganda? which is an immoral act. Because we cannot have malnutrition and hunger in a country of plenty. It's because the food system was captured, the seed system was captured, and people have to plead to some other person, whether a market, a shop, a relative, an NGO, or a government program to plant a seed, to sow a seed and expect a harvest. Our indigenous seeds have suffered intended discrimination because whoever promoted the discrimination had an intention of despising what we have, we abandon it, they introduce what they are selling, and they reap from us. Our animal breeds are the most resilient to any challenge, even the epitome of climate change. These breeds that they are pushing into our systems cannot survive. It starves one day, and the next week you have to reinvest because it will be dead. The resilient indigenous seed crop varieties are increasingly being replaced by modern hybrid seeds.
This is a story of resilience and hope amidst the seemingly invisible corporate agribusiness. Today there is a phenomena of buying imported seeds from Europe, especially from one country which is very common, is Netherlands. These seeds are very expensive. One tin of tomato seeds, which plant one acre, goes for 800,000. Even on the website, there is a company which is advertising yellow paper, and they are selling them 205,000 shillings per 1,000 seeds. You calculate that, it comes to 205,000 per seed. This is very, very expensive. Smallholder farmers, they might have been inculcated to tell them that you need to buy these seeds in order to, to have a good harvest. So you find they borrow to go and buy uh, these seeds. But what COVID has taught us, one, we depend on the smallholder farmers to produce our food. Then two, that smallholder farmers depend on their seeds to grow the food we want. Indigenous seeds underpin our sovereignty. If you lose your seeds, you have lost your, your sovereignty. You will be dependent on someone else to supply you seeds. And that's really very unfortunate. It means the farmer cannot take decisions anymore. The farmer cannot choose anymore. You are imposing on him what you want. Yet you are throwing away the different values in the various seeds, as I've mentioned for beans, even for millet, even for maize. When I grew up, we had a lot of multicolored maize. I'm told they still grow them in, in India. But here they have completely disappeared. We call them Amahunde. You will be lucky to find Amahunde. These hybrids came in, Longe 1, Longe 2, Longe what? Uh, that's what we're that's what finding. But the test in some of, the, of these varieties is flat. Whereas our traditional maize was very, very tasty and very nice. So that's what we're missing. So much as large masses of people have to be fed. We should not compromise the quality in our indigenous seeds. We have been trying to look around for the crops that look uh, seemingly getting extinct. We are not comfortable enough with the, the improved crops, the GMOs, we are not comfortable with them. Our village members thought that the, we needed to work very, very uh, fast to restore our traditional crops. And these include ground nuts and cassava, sweet potatoes. All these crops have been marginalized, especially by agriculturists. The government agriculturists have been marginalizing our traditional crops. But uh, happily enough, the village members thought that we should not throw away our traditional food crops and we have been collecting them into mother gardens, multiplication gardens, where we start with a few and eventually we get a lot of seed and we give to communities around. There are many people have appreciated keeping our traditional uh, crops, so this village is almost a model in sustaining our traditional crops. Indigenous seeds are the rescue of Africa. They are the rescue of Uganda. They have ability to be industrialized. We can commercialize the production of these seeds, of these bleeds. Only and only if they remain on the priority agenda of our governments, they attract public financing for research, for commercialization, for industrialization. And doing this again, we shouldn't do it for a farmer. We should do it for our economy. We should do it for our countries. We should do it for the food consumers that must get the best, safe, 
nutritious, stable, and sustainable diets for their health needs. We need to take back as a country the control of our seed. Because it's true, anybody who controls your food controls your livelihood.